Hello everyone, today in this video we are going to study a poem, A Legend of Northland by Phoebe Carey. As a name, as the title of this poem suggests that this poem is going to narrate us a legend. Now what is legend? Legend is usually a traditional story. It narrates, it's a historical or traditional story. It narrates a story something related to past or a tradition. However, its credibility is not authenticated. The main idea of legend is, the main purpose of legend is to instill in the minds of children the value of kindness, generosity and charity. It means the human quality, the legend, true story it instill in the mind of child the moral values, the human values. And as the title suggests Northland, Northland suggests that the poem is situated somewhere in or around North Pole. So the Northland is somewhere around North Pole. And the style of this poem, it is written in the style of ballad. Now what is ballad? Ballad is a song narrating a story in short stanza. The word ballad is of French provenance. It is a type of poetry or verse which are basically used as a dance song in ancient France. It is written in simple and easy to understand language. Hardship, tragedies, love and romance are the standard ingredients of ballad. Ballads are a part of a folk culture or popular culture and are passed on orally from one generation to next generation. A legend of the Northland is a ballad. So, ballad is a song which narrates a story. It narrates a story and it has its origin in French provenance. Usually it is a dance song sung in a very simple and easy language. The major theme are hardship, prejudice, love, romance. And the most significant feature is that it is passed on from one generation to another generation orally, not in a written form. Now before we move to the text, let me introduce you to the poet. Phoebe Carey was an American poetess and the younger sister of poetess Alice Carey. She was born on 4 September 1824. The sisters co-published poems in 1849 and then each went on to publish volumes of her own. After her death in 1871, joint anthologies of the sisters' unpublished poems were also compiled. Now let's move to the text. Away, away in Northland, where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot slip them through. This paragraph, the first paragraph, give us the his, uh, sorry geographical ideas of that area. That away, away, it means it is far away. Away, away stands for far away in Northland. So the poem is going to talk about the Geographi geographical area that is Northland, where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter. During winter, usually during winter, nights used to be longer than day. But in these areas, in Northland, near Pole, and during winter season, nights used to be quite longer. And it is so long that people even feel bored of sleeping that people can't spend their time sleeping all the time in night even it is so long. So this paragraph gives us the historical significance, the historical idea, sorry, geographical idea of that area that is of Northland that is near North Pole. Where they harness the swift render to sledge when it snows and the children look like beer's cup in their funny furry clothes. So what they do there during winter season when it snows, when snow 
falls all around when there is a snow all around then what they do they used to tie harness here stand for tie tie the swift render swift render you render this is render this animal which you see here in the picture that this is render they used to tie swift render to the sledge now this wooden frame which you see here on which the people are sitting that is sledge when it is snow so they used to use this structure for transportation so when it is snows when it is snow all around at that time they use this structure that is reindeer and sledge as a means of communication and the children look like bears cub so children the children of that place during winter season has been compared to bears cub why they are compared to bears cub because in their funny furry claws so when they are in their funny furry claws they looks like bears cub so bears cub you can see you might have seen bear and bear have hairy projection over their bed sorry over their body see so similarly the child when they wear the furry clothes they look like bear cubs so their size they are quite small as compared as they look as similar to a bear cub in size and that to the fur of the their body the clothes which they wear the furry clothes which they wear that gives a projection of bear cub hairy body and that's why they look like bear cub during winter season they tell them a curious story i don't believe it is true and yet you may learn a lesson if i tell the tale to you so the poet says the poet says over here that there in that land the people of that land they here refers to the people of that land they used to narrate a curious story their curious means an interesting story a strange story so they narrate a strange story to their children now the poet says the poet says that i don't believe it is true she don't find it to be true it is this tis it stands for it is in old english so she don't believe it to be true but she says at the same moment she says that if she is going to narrate that story to us to you to the reader then definitely the reader is going to learn some lesson from it now what is that story that the, now the poetess is going to narrate that story to us through this poem once when the good saint peter lived in a world below and walked about it preaching just as he did you know so saint peter saint peter when he was alive the poetess is talking about saint peter a good saint peter an apostle of christ saint peter is an apostle of christ so she says that when he was alive when he was in this world below world below here it means when he was alive living on the earth at that moment he used to walk all around and preach giving messages to the people he used to go all around the world he used to walk day and night and used to preach people preaches to give messages to the people so he used to preach giving sermons preaching is giving sermons he came to the door of a cottage in traveling round the earth where a little woman was making cakes and baking them on the hearth so we are introduced to another character that is a little woman so one day while he was traveling all around and preaching people then what happened he came to a little door sorry he went he came to a door of a cottage he came near a cottage there in that cottage a little woman was making cakes a woman was there she was making cakes and baking them on the hearth so she was kneading she was doing and then baking that cake on the hearth hearth is fireplace hearth is fireplace 
and being faint with fasting for the day was almost done he asked her from her store of cakes to give him a single one so we come to know that that lady she on she had a bakery shop she on a bakery shop so he was totally being faint with fasting he was totally tired feeling tired and dizzy light headed it means he has roamed all around the world throughout the day and night and therefore out of hunger now he was feeling totally tired and he was hungry so he came to this cottage and there he asked to that lady for a cake for a single cake from her cake stores so she made a very little cake but it was when but as it baking lay she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away now see here she made a very little cake she did not give the cake which was already there in the store as definitely it it was for selling purpose but now it is a sort of thing she she has to give it to the saint free of cost and then for in order to give him she started baking a new cake especially for giving her that two of a very little size so she made a cake and that to very little one but when as it baking lay so when it was on a, the hearth for baking at that moment she saw that cake and it seemed quite large to her she thought that this size the size of the cake can't be given away in charity she thought that it's quite big to give away in charity therefore she did not think it proper to give away so it shows her greedy nature in human quality a person who is hungry who is tired who is about to faint has asked her for a loaf loaf of bread sorry cake but she had denied she had not denied directly but indirectly she is pretending she is behaving as if she did not want to give uh, even a bit of cake to the saint now see then what she did therefore she needed another and still a smaller one but it looked when she turned it over as large as the first had done now see the height of her selfish behave and the miserliness so the first one she had already taken a little very little one now in the next paragraph it is said that she took even a smaller than the previous one she needed the dough and she took even the smaller bit of dough than the previous one but even now even that smaller one seems to be quite large as large as the first one when she turned it over on the hearth while it was baking so she was the lady who could not part away even a bit of her cake from her she can't even give a bit of cake to anyone then she took a tiny scrap in the previous paragraph it was in the first one it was little then even smaller than that then now it is said that tiny scrap tiny you can imagine the size very small in size very small tiny scrap of dough tiny which even you throw sometime and rolled and rolled it flat and baked it as thin as wafer but she could not part with that now see she took a tiny scrap of dough and she rolled and rolled and rolled it so that it would become very thin but a big in size so she rolled and rolled and rolled and she made it as thin as wafer wafer you eat a lot you might be aware of it so a person who is hungry who is tired who is looking for food 
for her she has for him she had begged a wafer and even now she could not part away even now she could not give even that wafer to that saint so what she did for she said my cake that seems too small when i eat of them myself are yet too large to give away so she put them on the shelf so what she said to herself now says this is monologue monologue when you speak to yourself that is monologue she says that my cakes that her cake seems too small when she eat herself but when it comes to donating when it comes to giving to someone else free of cost then she says that it be, seems to be quite large to her <coughs> so see her greedy nature she said that when she eat her cake herself at that moment her cake seems to be quite small to her it seems quite small to her but when it comes to donating to giving it to someone else when it then, then at that moment it seems quite big to her so it refers to the situation which you which you come across daily when you go out for shopping when you are go when you go out for to restaurant for eating at that moment it may be that you are going to you never bother about the bill there is no limit to your expense but if a beggar meet you outside that restaurant or that shopping mall at that moment you can't even be able to part away with a small amount which will satisfy you satisfy the need of that beggar while at the same moment you have wasted the money to in order to fulfill your desire you have wasted it desire had no limit but in order to fulfill someone in someone's need you are not willing to part away with the money which you have so it shows the human nature the inhuman nature which the human being has accustomed himself to then good saint peter grew angry now see this is the twist of the story this is the turning point of this story then good saint peter grew angry for he was hungry and faint and surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint so now he has waited for a long time he was hungry he was about to faint and he understood the nature of that lady he was already hungry and faint about to faint and that lady the behave of that lady provoked the saint and therefore his anger grew by leaps and bounds and now see what he did out of his anger and he said you are too selfish you are far too selfish to dwell in human form and to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm so he said to that lady that you are too selfish you are not good to be a human being you can't be a human being he said that you are greedy you don't have the human quality you should not live as a human being dwell it means to live you are not fit to be a human because you lack the basic qualities of human being the human qualities therefore he said that you don't deserve all this leisure of life that is food and shelter and fire you don't deserve all these things because you don't understand the feeling of others now let's see then what he did now you shall build as the birds do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood so now the saint peter has cursed that lady 
and he said in the last paragraph we have already seen that he said that you are that you are not fit to be a human being because you lack the humane nature and therefore now what he said he said that you will be a bird so he converted that lady that little woman into bird and what curse he gave that shall get very scanty food you will get very scanty food very little amount of food and that to buy doing a very la- hard labor and what labor you will do you will bore and bore and bore all day in the hard dry wood so the wood the trunk of the tree you might have seen it how hard it is so he cursed that lady that you will have to bore throughout the day in that hard trunk with your beak and even then you will not get the sufficient amount of food so he converted that lady into a woodpecker you can see here in this photograph then up she went through the chimney never speaking a word and out of the top flew a woodpecker for she was changed to a bird so as a result as a result of curse which was given by saint peter saint peter that lady converted into a woodpecker and it flew out without a word without making any noise from the chimney chimney you can see here so in a bakery shop there used to be a chim- chimney to escape the smokes out of that bakery shop because the hearth used to alight all the time in the bakery shop and therefore there used to be a chimney and through that chimney only that little lumen flew out without making any word without saying any word and finally see it changed to a bird to a woodpecker she had a scarlet on her head and that was left the same but all the rest of her clothes were burned black as a coal in flame so what happened while she was flowing flowing out of that chimney at that moment what happened her all clothes whatever she was wearing all that burned and it became as black as coal so flame the flame which was there in the chimney that burned the clothes of that little woman and as a result her body became as black as coal only the scarlet cap the cap which she had on her head only that remained and therefore the head was red in color while the whole body became black in color here you can see in this photograph the whole body is black in color only the head is red in color so this her head is red in color due to that scarlet cap which she had on her head only this was left and the rest clothes was burnt and every country school boy has seen her in a wood where she lives in the trees till this very day boring and boring for food so now she is away from home she is away from all luxury of life all basic necessities of life and now she is living in forest where the school boy passed through and they used to make fun at that bird and now she is making hole in the tree trunk with the beak for finding foods so in this poem we come to know that how a lady having inhuman qualities who don't possess any human quality was converted to a wood picker so the poet through this legend want us to have some human quality to be generous toward the needy people to be kind and soft hearted to the people who are in need this is all about the literal meaning of this poem now let's move to the literary devices used in this poem so now in the first paragraph away away the word away away is repeated 
so it forms a literary device that is known as reputation again in the last line you can see that they them through t sound is repeated t sound is prominent in the last line of first paragraph so it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration again one thing you can notice in the third line you can see that the words of third line shift to fourth line without any punctuation mark so again it forms a literary device that is known as enjambment similarly enjambment you can find in the next paragraph first line of next paragraph here again there is no punctuation mark and the word shifts to next line without any punctuation mark similarly here in third line of the second paragraph you can find enjambment so the word shifts to next line without any punctuation mark and again in the second last line of second paragraph you can see look like bs cup so here the child the children here the children of northland have been compared to bs cup so this bs cup comparison of child to the bs cup refers to a literary device that is known as simile so whenever a comparison is being made with the help of as and like it refers to literary device poetic device that is known as simile again in the last line you can see funny furry f sound is prominent over here in this two word so it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration now coming to next paragraph in this paragraph you can see in the first line t sound is prominent they tell them t sound is prominent so it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration again in the third and fourth line you will see in third line you will see y sound is prominent y is repeated in the subsequent word that is in yet and you so again it forms a literary device that is alliteration again in last line tell the tale t sound is repeated t sound is repeated over here so again it forms a literary device that is alliteration moving to next paragraph you can see saint peter saint peter is referred over here in this paragraph so saint peter it forms a literary device that is known as allusion now what is allusion allusion is referring to someone from history or someone from past or someone who is not present at the present so that is allusion now again in the last line you can see the comparison is being you made with the help of as so again it forms a literary device that is simile moving to next paragraph he came to the door of a cottage in this paragraph you can see in the first line o sound is prominent to door of cottage so o sound is prominent again it forms a literary device that is known as assonance in the next paragraph you can see in the first line faint with fasting f sound is prominent f sound is repeated in the starting of the subsequent word so it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration so again in the third line you can see f sound is being repeated in the starting of the word so again it forms literary device that is known as alliteration now in this paragraph you can see s sound is repeated so again it forms a literary device that is alliteration again in the second line you can see but baking again it forms a alliteration in next paragraph in the last line as large as the first had done so the comparison between that two cake which she was baking for saint peter is being done using as and therefore it refers to poetic device that is simile again coming to next paragraph in the second line you can see in the second uh, sorry ha ah, yes in the second in the second line you can see rolled and rolled is repeated 
so rolled and rolled is repeated the this two word this word is repeated twice and therefore it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration in the first line you can see t sound and s sound is repeated in the starting of these words and therefore it forms a literary device that is alliteration then again in third line thin as wafer so that king is being compared with the help of a, as to wafer therefore it forms a literary device that is simile now moving to next paragraph i eat them myself them here refers to cake now cake is not living thing but them is being used for it them is usually used for living being and therefore it is being personified therefore it is personification now again in the last line of this second paragraph you can see as sound is repeated in the beginning of this words and therefore it again forms literary device that is alliteration then in next paragraph again saint peter is evoked over here so again it forms literary device that is allusion again in the next line you can see h sound is prominent h and f sound is repeated in the beginning of the word therefore it forms a literary device that is known as alliteration again in next line s sound is repeated again it forms alliteration now in next paragraph you can see in the second and third line both the line starts with the subsequent line starts with the same word that is with two so it forms a literary device that is known as anaphora so whenever the subsequent line starts with the same word it forms a literary device that is known as anaphora and in the third line you can see o sound is prominent to both four o sound is prominent in these three words and therefore it forms assonance it forms a literary device that is assonance moving to next paragraph as the birds do so now she is being compared to birds so she will have to be like bird the woman is being compared to bird so it refers to literary device that is simile again in the third line you can see boring word is repeated so again it forms literary device that is repetition moving to next paragraph in the third line you can see out of top old picker so o sound is prominent over here in this line and there it for it forms a literary device that is known as assonance now moving to next paragraph in the last line you can see black as a coal so the color of that bird that is a lady the lady which who was converted to old picker so the color of that bird is being compared to the color of coal and therefore it forms a literary device that is simile again in the next last paragraph in the last line you can see boring boring is being repeated and therefore it forms a literary device that is known as repetition so this is all about the literary devices the poetic devices which is being used in this poem so in this poem we come to know that we should possess the necessary human quality which each and every one should have otherwise it may be that the same consequences we may face as the little woman in this poem in this legend has faced so thank you for watching this video thank you